to the very first episode of Chasing Joe's, where sometimes the chase is just better than the catch. I've got a full show lined up for you guys this evening. I'm your host, Jimmy Johnson. But before we get into anything this, this evening, before I take you on this G.I. Joe journey that we so desperately deserve, I have to give the shout outs that are so deserved right now, and that is the unofficial G.I. Joe Rec Room to all the administrators, to all the members, because, because of you, this is the reason it's happening. That's right, the unofficial G.I. Joe Rec Room, the only place that is unofficially official or officially unofficial, however you want to look at it, is the, the go-to group today for G.I. Joe's. All right, I got a great show lined up for you guys. I certainly hope you enjoy it. Give me all the feedback you can. You have to excuse me for one minute so I can check out the comments that you guys leave. Unfortunately, where my camera is sitting right now, I can't get to any of the comments. So I'm going to have to make do the best way we can tonight. You have to excuse the humble beginnings, ladies and gentlemen. But uh, putting in groundwork, you know what I mean? Okay, let's see what's going on. Here we go. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, the first thing we're going to do this evening is we're going to get into the uh, what I call the character world news, the G.I. Joe world news, what goes on with these characters that's not in front of the camera. And uh, apparently these guys have a uh, quite a colorful lifestyle. And uh, I got to admit, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. All right, one of the top stories this evening is that this past Sunday evening, it was reported that shots were fired and a hostage situation took place at a local McDonald's in the Atlanta metro area, where Cobra's, Cobra terrorist organization leader Cobra Commander and Mars owner Destro were seen entering the fast food giant, and it was reported that soon after an argument ensued where the cashier gave Cobra Commander the wrong chicken nugget sauce. Man, this guy is apparently very serious about his nuggets. Okay. What happened was, is apparently the man was so serious about it that the deadly duo took a fry cook hostage and made off in great haste into the night. It says local authorities had reported that they had found an abandoned wreckage of a Stinger, Stinger Humvee off Interstate 75 South while a team of techno vipers were present trying to repair the wreckage, and they were detained for questioning. So if you see these two supervillains, please contact General Hawk at 1-800-555-JOES and state that it is an Alpha Victor Command priority. Wow. Hard to believe that some of these things go on, you know what I mean? Okay, in other news, uh, apparently... By the way, my, my comments are not working, so I can't see you guys' comments. I hope they're good. If you love this show, tell a friend. If you hate it, tell an enemy. Anyway, it's a 360 win. Now, in other news, the mysterious Commando Ninja Snake Eyes was reportedly kidnapped this past Friday and interrogated by three Cobra interrogator officials for 18 hours straight with no results before they actually realized that the man couldn't talk. Now, I'm not an authority on interrog interrogation, and I'm definitely not an authority on the vetting process for COBRA officials, but I do think you do require an IQ of at least 75 before need applying for this job. I'm just saying. Anyway, after he was released, uh, his whereabouts is still unknown, so if, uh, if you have any information, please contact Chasing Joe's or uh, your local officials. On a positive note, it's also been confirmed that uh, 2018 models of the Bat Trooper will now come equipped with microwave ovens and electric razors. It was reported that Dr. Mindbender said that these mechanical death machines, everyone deserves to have a close shave and everyone deserves to have a hot meal if you're sharing the battlefield with these Bat Troopers. And uh, they want you to look your best if you're wearing the Cobra Sigil. So you got to have those razors in there. You know what I mean? <sighs> okay. Wow. 
This news is really over the top this, this evening. Okay. Also, it says G.I. Joe members Law and Mutt were fined $500 this past week for their first, their trusty sidekicks order and junkyard not having their rabies vaccinations and certifications up to date. Conrad Duke Hauser stated in an interview that there were harsher penalties in the future for such things because they can't afford a lawsuit right now because they're saving all funds for a Sergeant Slaughter's chin reduction. That's pretty insane. Okay, now, this is pretty important. All right, this week on our uh, Lost and Found News, the deadly assassin Firefly has reportedly lost his green phone. Now, if you see this phone, he has a, uh, he has mentioned that it has lots of private and classified information on it, if you know what I mean. Now, I don't know what his idea of classified means, and I think we could all use our imaginations just a little bit on this situation. But if anybody should find it, please contact the studio or... or at least send it to your local authorities so they can at least get it back to the rightful owner. Now, a lot of fireflies lose these green phones, but uh, this one seems to be the uh, higher-ups. Know what I mean? All right. That's just it for the character world news. Now, we do have a, a great, great deal of discussions to go over. I tried to pick out the top discussion topics for uh, all the comments that you guys really flooded the threads with that I put up earlier this week. Uh, I really appreciate that. And uh, a little bit later on in the show, yes, we are going to be giving some prizes away. I'm going to be giving away uh, a few surprises here and there. And uh, yes, that we will be having that, that big drawing for the Rattler that we'll be giving away a little bit later. <clears throat> All right. Before I get into the discussion... Before I get into the topics of the, the questions that you guys had asked, uh, one thing I do want to mention is that Joe Lana is coming up this March. It'll be March 9th, 10th, and 11th. Uh, it'll be at the Marriott Center in Atlanta, Georgia. That'll be 2000 Century Boulevard. And uh, you can go to joelana.org. That's www.joelana.org. And you can find out all the details they're going to have a, a, quite a bit of vendors and artists and uh, comics. Uh, one of the big names, of course, every year, like L Larry Hama, will be there. But one of the great news, especially G.I. Joe Rec Room related, is that the Rec Room has been selected to do a panel on uh, March the 10th. It'll be at 12 p.m. But on the side news... The G.I. Joe Rec Room will have a meet and greet at 8 p.m. on the 9th. That'll be March the 9th. You can come in and you can meet everybody from the Rec Room, chill out, talk Joes, things like that. And also, the G.I. Joe Rec Room will have the presidential suite at the Marriott for Joe Lana. You can come in, buy, sell, and trade, and things like that. Uh, you can thank uh, Mr. Matt Collins for that. Uh, he's definitely uh, one of the... The big timers here in the group. Uh, great guy. I've, I've known him for a while, and uh, he runs 80s Toys of Princeton. So be sure and check that out. Um, all right. Now, one of the first questions that was asked, there was a lot of guys asked about it, was uh, advice for new collectors. Um. You know, everybody starts somewhere, and uh, that's that has a lot to do with the giveaways that I that I do here in the rec room. I try to get help people get started with their collections, and a lot of people don't know what to do or how to get things going and things like that. <clears throat> One of the the only advice that I could truly give right now would be to start small. Find a line in this GI Joe, you know. G.I. Joe universe that Hasbro and the fans and everybody has created throughout these years. Start small and find a line that you really connect with the most. Something that, uh, don't try to collect multiple lines at once. It can get really costly very fast. Um, I've, I've had 
some trouble in the past doing that. You know, you get picked four or five different lines at one time, and you just you're going to wind up spending a lot of money, and you're, you're really not going to go anywhere. But I mean, it depends on how you want to do it. If you want to be a completist, then uh, you definitely want to start with one line and go from there. You don't want to mix it up too much. Um, you know. If you're one of the more interested in realism and posability for the figures, then you, you, you want to lean more toward the modern lines than rather than the vintage. Then, uh, or if you're more of the nostalgic and, in my opinion, better made figures, then you definitely want to go with the vintage lines. But, I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, let's see. Yep. It says, I'm sure that the addiction will grow and consume you just like it has most of us. I mean, I'm, I'll admit it. I got a hard time passing up a good deal when I see one. Um, the vintage lines have always had a, a very, very special place with me. Uh, I'm not a very big time uh, collector of the modern lines. I do have a few. But that's that would be the best that I would advice I could give you is to start small and Start with one line at a time. And don't let anybody decide for you what you want to collect. You know, it doesn't matter what anybody else's opinion is. You know, if you like, I don't know, Sigma 6. You know, I'm not a fan of Sigma 6 per se. But if, if that's your thing, then go for it, you know. <clears throat> Alright. Another question that was asked in a, a great deal was uh, what Hasbro did wrong on vehicles. And why they, why do we customize? I'm a fellow customizer myself. There's a lot of a lot of good guys uh, uh, in this Joe universe that do a lot of customizing. Uh, I'm actually going to mention a few of those a little bit later in the show. <clears throat> um, I think one of the biggest things about uh, the GI Joe vehicles that Hasbro got wrong was the lack of detail. I mean, I, I get the fact that they were marketed more towards children, and they were marketed, you know, more towards the certain demographics of that. But the good news is, is that since that happened, and since the way and that was, that's the way they were made, is that it gave all of us the opportunity to make them better and make them the way that we wanted them. Um, if you really wanted to uh, have wishful thinking per se, I think that. Uh, Maybe Hasbro created them just so that later in life people could create them their own way. I know that's a lot of wishful thinking in this fantasy land, but I mean it's just a good thought to think about, you know. Um, let's see what else we got here. All right. <clears throat> One of the questions was the importance of collecting to individuals. Well, I mean, truly every individual has their own reasons for having this hobby, myself personally, and uh, the best way I can explain this, the best way I explain why I do what I do, and why I do things like this right here, and the giveaways and things like that, is because it's just simply magic. That's all it is. It's That's the only word that I could come up with is that, to describe this, and how much it means to me, and the, the hobby itself is that it's magic. When I first laid eyes on a G.I. Joe when I was five years old, it was 1986. My very first G.I. Joe was a G.I. Joe Bat Trooper. I'll never forget it. And my whole world changed, or it came alive, you might say. That's what I think the most, thing, most important thing about collecting is, is that it can open up a whole world of imagination. And I think that's one of the big things that's lacking in the world today, especially among the young kids. Um, there is absolutely no better experience to me than to actually see a child or see a individual's eyes light up when they lay their eyes first on a G.I. Joe or any kind of action figure from any line. It doesn't matter what it is. But when you see them light up and you see that, it's like doors are opening up. That right there, that's gold. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the importance of collecting at individuals. It's not about the money. It's not about being uh, bigger or better than the next guy. Or my collection's better than yours. It's not about that. It's about the magic 
of the toy itself? That's what I think. That was one of the questions. Okay, another big thing would be customs and accessories to do so. Um, I guess it would really depend on the job. Um, me personally, again, it's all relative to one's preference, but I can only speak for myself. I use Citadel paints. I use Tamiya paints. I use Model Masters. I've used testers. I've used spray paints. Uh... I've used airbrush. I mean, the, the list goes on. It's really all about what you try and what you're comfortable with. Uh, my, like I said, my preference is uh, Citadel and Model Master paints. Uh, I like Royal Taclon brushes. You can find those at like any local Walmart. Uh, they're like a blue line brush. But uh, the, the quality of the brush itself is, is awesome to me. Um... Your limit is only your imagination as far as like the kit bashing uh, possibilities are endless. And it all really boils down to, you know, what you've had good experiences using. Um, I, me personally, a lot of people don't agree with it, but in my personal opinion, there is absolutely no better primer on this planet to use than 98 cent Walmart brand spray paint. I don't care what anybody says. I've had the best experiences with it. It's got the best dry time and the best texture, especially if you're going to do ba multiple base coatings and you're going to be doing a clear coat layer. I don't care what nobody says. That's the best one to use, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, another one would be kit bashing and repair techniques for vintage GI Joes. Um, again, it's all about the, the imagination of what you're trying to create as far as like the kit bashing goes. I mean, you can use really anything as long as it doesn't look absolutely ludicrous. Um, I think one of the best things that you could do is that it doesn't matter what it is, whatever kind of fodder that you decide you want to, you know, do, save everything. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's like arms, feet, chest, torsos, whatever. You know, especially crotch pieces, especially if you own a beachhead, you know, an 84 beachhead. Uh, excuse me, 86. I think that's right. If it's right, it's right. If it's wrong, oh well. Anyway, but yeah, pieces like that, things that, you know, multiply bust. Um, the weird thing is, is I, I've never actually seen... Um, uh, I don't own a beachhead that's, that's had one. I've never had a problem with them, but apparently they're notorious for that. But anyway, yes, the point is save everything. Save every little piece because you never know what you could use later on. Uh, as far as repair techniques, um, I've seen people use furniture polish to tighten joints. Um, I don't per se suggest you using that. Um, it can do damage to the the figure itself, it can do damage to the, um, the paint, especially on white, um, white figures, white paint jobs, things like that. I wouldn't advise using it. Um, I think um, as far as like cleaning goes, the best thing that I've had experience using as far as cleaning vehicles and figures and anything like that is you use a uh, lemon juice, Dawn detergent, and lukewarm water. Uh, mix two parts uh, lemon juice together, mix two parts Dawn detergent, and mix uh, six parts water. That's the best thing to use. I always use a toothbrush. It helps. It definitely cleans your vehicles and your figures up really, really well. Um, it's safe to use on the decals. I've used it on a lot of decals. I haven't had any problems. Um, there's also like repair techniques, like if you want to restore a white paint job to storm shadows, stuff like that. Peroxide works very, really well. You can use stuff like that. Um, now I know a lot of problems that, that people have is like the screws will get stripped out in the backs and the leg joints and things like that. Um, you can use rubber bands with, uh, these things. I've actually used, uh, small screwdrivers and super glue at the tip to get the screws loose. If that doesn't work, 
Uh, always use a, uh, a drill bit, a very small fine drill bit that's actually about two times smaller than the screw itself and go very slowly and try that. Um, I've had good experiences with that. Uh, again, I'm sorry that I can't read your comments right now. Um, I really wish I could. Um, I, I hope this is being informative. But um, giving the humble beginnings of this show right now, it's just not possible. At least not for me. <clears throat> okay. A next question would be uh, the state of the hobby of collecting G.I. Joe. Well, I, I think the, first, the past few years it's fluctuated up and down. Um, it's, it seems to be on the rise lately. It seems like the popularity of G.I. Joe is, is pretty high as of late. I mean, if they're carrying G.I. Joe lines of clothing and things like that at, at a, a local Walmart, then obviously some people are into it. Um, there will be a G.I. Joe movie released at a, uh, uh, 2020. Yeah, it'll be a 2020, another G.I. Joe movie will be released. We're, we got our fingers crossed that they actually get this one right because, uh, in my opinion, the past two movies that they have, they weren't even G.I. Joe movies in my opinion. I mean, they were so bad it left Snake Eyes speechless. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Anyway, uh, like I said, uh, it's just fluctuated. It's on the rise lately. It seems a lot of people do. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. <clears throat> seems like a lot of people talk with some. Every day I talk with somebody or on the groups or in person or anything like that that wants to start collecting G.I. Joes or just try to get the things that they had when they were a child. So I, I would say that it's not a hobby. I don't like. I don't even want to use that term anymore. It's not a hobby, because I think, to me personally, GI Joe collecting GI Joe is a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, and it's a culture. Especially when you go out and you experience these conventions and uh, gatherings and meet and greets and things like that. That's what you realize. You realize it's a culture. It's something that people just latch on to, you know. And if 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 you're one of the guys that does that and, and you got friends and they're not into that or they make poke at it or things like that, that's okay. Because you know something. You believe in something that they can't quite understand. So that makes you a little bit more superior in my opinion. But that's that's what it is. It's a culture. It's a lifestyle. I mean, it's it's, it's something that you cannot get out of you. I would think. I mean, that's, that's the way it is for me at least. Um... But uh, so I think the the state of the hobby of collecting GI Joe is alive and well. It's certainly alive and well in all of us. Um, I think that it's possible that it can decline if if we don't all keep staying together and keep pushing this thing, because I I don't I don't see how it could end as long as we're doing everything that we do every day on a daily basis. <clears throat> All right. Now, before I go any further, uh, I'll answer the last question. I'll answer the last question. It says, where to find G.I. Joes at decent prices? Um, well, I'll tell you one place that you won't find G.I. Joes at very decent prices, at least in my experience, is you can use Evil Bay or eBay. I call it Evil Bay. Um, I don't have very good experiences with that. A lot of things are overpriced. Um, you can find good dealers. You can find good uh, members of eBay that will sell you decent things at prices. But, I mean, I've had experiences to where they, they would mail me my merchandise just literally wrapped in newspaper, and that's it. No box, no bubble wrap, no nothing. It's just wrapped in newspaper with an address on it. Um, a lot of things, like I said, are overpriced there. Um but the best thing that I would suggest you try to do is try to start at like uh, local flea markets, yard sales, garage sales, anything like that. I mean, nine times out of ten, you won't find things that are complete. But, I mean, I've seen guys that promote into this group that are, have put posts and into, into this group that have uh, found just monumental finds. I mean, just literally gold at garage sales for uh, next to nothing in cash. Um, 
one of my favorite things to do besides that like i said the chase is better than the hunt as uh you can attend these conventions you can you can uh attend things like uh joe con or as i mentioned before joe lana um but if if you live in the southeast and i'll say this if you live in the southeast around me i live in, in alabama you know georgia region i'm literally like three miles from the georgia border now if you live in this area there is absolutely no better place to go and shop for vintage toys it doesn't matter what you have it's a place called full circle toys in noonan georgia i'm gonna pull up the address for you so you can copy it on your screen there it is Full Circle Toys, 17 Jefferson Street, Noonan, Georgia. The owner is Kelly and Richard Mix. There is absolutely no better two people to deal with and get great deals from. They're friendly. They have something literally for everybody. I cannot escape that store every time I go in there without spending at least 50 to 100 bucks. At least. They have a great selection of modern uh, vintage, anything you need, almost any line. Sigma 6, Valor Venom, 30th anniversary, 25th, 50th anniversary, vintage, whatever you want. Even some of the 12-inch lines. And if you're not only into that, I mean, they also have everything. They have Star Wars. They have uh, wrestling figures, uh, vintage uh, Ghostbusters, Power Rangers, just on and on and on. Check these guys out. You cannot ask for a better shopping experience if you're looking for G.I. Joe than Full Circle Toys in Noonan, Georgia. All right. Now, next thing we're going to get into, I, I hope you guys keep sending me feedback on what you want to hear about, the, the questions that you, that, uh, you want me to add, uh, address. I can only cover three or four. This is like a time show, and we're literally almost 30 minutes into it. Uh, one thing we're going to do right now is I'd like to mention, um, it's a little segment that I call, um, yeah, excuse me, it's, it's a lot to keep up with. I've been doing a lot of preparing and, you know, I try to do my homework. It's doing the best. Uh, it's one segment that I want to address right now and that's, um, the artists, the G.I. Joe artist of this rec room. Um, what I like to do is I'm going to do, uh, hopefully, every two weeks, I'll do a show. And every two weeks, I'm going to bring out one big name and one hobby artist that's going to be acknowledged on this show. Now, one of the, um, the big name that I've, that I've selected this week for artist is going to be, uh, let me see, I'm going to pull it up right now. And that would be, let's see, there. oh, there we go, Adam Riches, www.adamriches.com. He actually does a lot of the package art for the Joe Club. Um, he does a lot of illustrations for them as well. Uh, the guy is an extremely good artist. Uh, check out this website. I've actually got a few of his, uh, a few of his illustrations right here. Uh, this is one of them. Uh, his, like I said, his name is Adam Riches at adamriches.com. He does a lot of the illustrations for the Joe Club. Um, he does a lot, a lot of the packaging art, from what I understand. Uh, let's see if I can find that other one. Nope, oh, there we go. Uh, this is some of his stuff. So, you know. Go visit, leave some feedback. I mean, the guy's a phenomenal artist, in my opinion. <clears throat> so, check that out and, you know, drop some feedback to him. Drop some feedback to me or whatever. Okay. Now, the second one was going to be the hobby artist. He's, uh, I guess you would call it amateur artist or whatever you want to call him. Um, he's going to be the... I don't like using the term small guy. Uh, it's it's more like a unrecognized, let's say that, or not as recognized. Anyway, uh, it's going to be hobby artist Jeremy Steele. Jeremy Steele, he's a uh, he's actually a 
a hobby artist from uh, South Carolina, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Uh, he's a very uh, good standing member of this G.I. Joe rep room. And uh, as a matter of fact, he did uh, the actual uh, the background for this right here for my show, Chasing Joe's. Uh, he's an amazing guy. He can draw anything that you need him to. Uh, he does very good work on uh, G.I. Joe's, and I'm, I'm sure that he you could put him to work doing things for you, and you could not be prouder of the finished product. Uh, let's see. That's actually one of them. He did a Storm Shadow recently. Uh, maybe you guys have seen it in the rec room. I hope, I hope you have. But uh, he does really, really, really good work. Um, so, you know, give him a shout out. Let him know you appreciate it. And uh, give him some feedback. All right. See if I can find another one. There we go. He actually did this for me as a mock-up. I was going to use this as Chasing Joe's uh, front page, but uh, it looks so good the way it is, and uh, I couldn't be happier with the way, the way it turned out. Uh, he's a very talented artist. Like I said, his name is Jeremy Steele. He's a member of this rec room. Um, if you'd like some art or if you, uh, if you have some kind of ideas that you would like to present to him, I'm sure he could come up with it for you. Uh, give him a shout out and see uh, see where it goes because I, I think you'd be very pleased. <clears throat> All right. Now I need to do another uh, little plug here. It's another little plug for uh, an event that's coming up. It's coming up on uh, April 21st, 2018. It's going to be Joe Fest. Joe Fest is going to have a monumental show. Uh, this there are literally people waiting in line to be a part of this show. Uh, it's it's um, it's the creative the creative uh, aspect of the head one of the head men here in the rec room, uh, Ed Schumacher. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you're getting well. Uh, hopefully, no more trips back to the hospital, buddy. I hope you're doing really well, and I hope you get well soon. But the uh, Joe Fest is his baby, and. Uh, a lot of guys are going to be a part of this show. A lot of guys in the rec room are they're itching to be a part of it. Um, a lot of customs guys are going to be there. I'm going to be there. Of course, Cyber Crow Customs is going to be there. Uh, I'm going to be raffling off uh, a few of my customs. going to have a lot of my customs for sale. Uh, there's going to be uh, um, a lot of big names that are there, a lot of comic collectors, artists. I mean... There's going to be Cosplay. The Girls of the Finest is going to be there. I mean, this is going to be a fantastic show, and you do not want to miss this. It'll be in a, uh, it'll be in Augusta, Georgia. Go to www.augustatoyandcomicshow.com for all the details. Everything that you need will be right there. Uh, hotel information, um, artists, vendors, you name it, you'll find it there. Okay, the next part of this that I want to try and do is that I want to try and acknowledge a few customizers that are in this group. Uh, you guys do some amazing work to me. You, you put my work to shame. There's no doubt about it. It makes it look like it was done by a four-year-old kindergartner. You know what I mean? <clears throat> uh, one of them is uh, he's a member of this group. His name is Freeman Slavins. I think I'm pronouncing his last name right, Freeman Slavins. Slavins, excuse me. Um, he's a creator of Swizzle Sticks um, Customs. Let me see if I can find him here. There it is, Swizzle Sticks Custom Action Figures. He's done uh, a lot of good work, and uh, some of the, I'm going to show you a few of his pictures of uh, a lot of his work he's done. I mean, I would definitely hit him up if if I didn't do my own customs. I mean, this this would be one of the go-to guys to check out. Let's see. Uh, that's actually some of his work, the Zartan. Um, I mean, the detail on this is, is phenomenal. I love the packaging. I love the figure itself. Um, he's a phenomenal customizer. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't hesitate twice about asking him to do anything for me regardless of what the price was. Um, 
I mean, as long as it's not extreme, you know, like you're doing a flag or something, you know. But I wouldn't invest in one of those right now, anyway, especially the market. But anyway, this is one of one of his uh, customs, and I think I got one more here. There we go. I don't know exactly which one this is, but it is, it's really cool. Um, I love the green. The custom work is, is, is fine. It's spot on. The detail is good. It looks like he's got good textures, clean clean lines, everything that you need. And uh, I'd be proud to own it, you know, if, if it were me. So give Freeman a shout out. Tell him you love his work. And uh, just, you know, send him some support. Another one is uh, another customizer that I'm going to acknowledge this week was going to be a, his name is uh, Matthew Berneka. Uh, he's another good upstanding member of this group. Um, he's, uh, he's the owner of Short Bus Customs in association with uh, Mayhem Customs. I think that's it, Mayhem Customs. And uh, let's see if I can find it. There we go. Yeah, Mayhem Customs. Uh, he's associated with Mayhem Customs. He, his is uh, Short Bus Customs. And he does uh, absolutely some of the best custom work I've ever seen. Um, he's actually going to be doing some customs for the Joe Fest that's coming up in April that's going to be there at the show for sale. I've got a couple of pictures of those that I'll got, I want you guys to check out. Okay, let's see. That would be... His tanks, the action force, or the red shadows, what you call it. But uh, this is absolutely phenomenal work. Um, let Matthew know that you, you enjoy his work and, uh, you know, you support it. Come out to Joe Fest and see this in person because, I mean, the pictures just do not do it justice. Okay, one, one more custom uh, picture for that would be this one. I mean, the weathering on this is absolutely beautiful. To me, it, it's flawless. Uh, the weathering effects on this is, is gorgeous. Um, he does fantastic uh, custom work. Like I said, to me, way better than I could ever do, I, I would think. Um, <clears throat> so, like I said, give Berneka a shout, shout out and let him know that you uh, support Short Bus Customs and that you love his work. All right. Now, one more thing I want to mention before we get into the uh, the prizes and the giveaways and things like that, I do want to mention that uh, currently, right now in the in the the rec room, we're having the Hall of Fame going on, and through March, uh, the Hall of Fame ceremony will culminate at uh, Joe Fest on April twenty first, twenty eighteen. So. You need to go in and you need to vote for the guy that you think deserves to have a Golden Duke go home with him. Um, very big contest. Uh, uh, there's so many deserving members that, that deserve this honor. Um, so go in and cast your votes for who you think you know deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. It's officially unofficial, and that's all that counts for the G.I. Joe Red Room. Okay, now... I know you guys are itching to uh, see what's going to be given away and uh, you want to get to this drawing for the Rattler. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to stall for time just because the suspense is terrible and I really, really want it to last. You feel it? Because I know I do. Oh. All right. I'll get along with it. All right. First thing I'm going to be giving away is... Uh, I'm going to be giving away a t-shirt, an unofficial rec room t-shirt. It's going to be uh, a prize for uh, just basically for the show, to promote the show, to promote the rec room. I'm sorry, but it's only one size. It will be a size large. So whoever wins it, I hope, you know, I hope you, uh, you're you happy with it. Okay. As you can see, I put... All your names that you entered into into this for the free free giveaways is going to be happening on this show. I put every single name in it in a random picker, just like I always do. As you can see, there are quite a bit of names. I mean, you guys flooded this, and uh, I mean, I couldn't be happier. All right, 
The very first name that's going to be picked for the t-shirt is going to be, let's find out, Charlie Diller. Hey, Charlie, you won yourself a free t-shirt, my friend. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, get me, uh, I'll contact you, you contact me for your, your shipping information, and I'll get that out to you as soon as I can. Um, man, that's, that's really good. I mean, they they couldn't go to a more deserving guy. You know what I'm saying? Charlie Dillard is a good guy. He's a good member of the rec room. And uh, congratulations, my friend. Okay. I got two more prizes. One more is I'm going to be giving away another rec room t-shirt. And like I said, it's one size. We're going to find out who's going to win that. And here we go. Let's see. Who's going to be lucky number two tonight? Lucky number two. Michael Dale Mama Smith. Michael Dale Mama Smith. You are the lucky winner of a G.I. Joe unofficial rec room t-shirt, my friend. And uh, get me your shipping information, and I'll get that out to you. I hope you wear it with pride. If you can't wear it, put it as a seat cover. Let people know that, hey. I'm part of this group, and it's the only one. It's the best one. This is probably, the rec room is probably the most positive, most laid-back group there is for G.I. Joe's right now, I, at least in my opinion. Um, all the members are very helpful. So support the G.I. Joe rec room, guys. Okay, now we get down to business. There was 50 names that got put in for this G.I. Joe Rattler to be given away. And it sold out in about 45 minutes. I mean, it was lightning fast. Okay. I'm going to show you a picture. Well, not a picture. I'm going to show you the actual plane. Okay. It is 100% complete. I do have the other panel pieces in uh, my hobby room. And uh, they will be included, so you know, don't don't worry about that. Uh, one thing I would like to stress to you guys, if you're gonna have this, if you're gonna own this thing, is that be very, very careful with the landing gear. These things are very notorious for stress points and breakage. When I bought this thing, it already had stress points on it, so I would not advise you to put the landing gear up. Uh, one of the pieces of advice has always been handed down. It got handed down to me. Is that if the landing gear is down, keep it down. If the landing gear is up, keep it up. Because, I mean, you do not want to risk breaking it. I mean, it, it, it's like a shattered dream. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to show you a picture of the Wild Weasel. Not a picture. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, Wild Weasel does come with it. He is complete. He's not broken. He's a uh, matter of fact, uh, he doesn't even have cracked elbows or anything like that. He's in very good shape. The paint's very good. I know you guys are itching to find out who's going to win this thing. Uh, I wish I could tell you, but uh, I'm going to let it uh, rock on for a few more seconds. Just uh, a little aggravation. You got to enjoy it. I mean... Okay, let's find out who's going to win. Are you ready? Is everybody paying attention? All right, here we go. Number 17. Number 17. Who wins this thing? Let's find out. Number 17. Chris Goddard. Chris Goddard, you are the winner of the G.I. Joe 1983 Rattler. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, please get me your shipping information. I'll get it right out to you. It'll be packaged really well. I hope you enjoy this. Most importantly is I hope that everything that I give away and uh, everything that I raffle off, I hope it goes to somebody that truly enjoys the hobby and truly enjoys having this in their collection and that really needs it. You know, to get their collections off and running or you could be a, you know, a master collector and you're just adding it. As long as you enjoy it, that's okay with me. Okay, it's been a, a fast show, but a small show, but that's just about all I've got for this week. So, um, this is going to wrap it up for me, and uh, I hope you guys uh, 
give me some feedback. You know, let me know what you think. Uh, comments, questions, anything that you might have, you know, let me know. And then I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. And hopefully we can do these, these shows a little bit more on a regular basis. But uh, that's all I've got right now. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you for joining me on Chasing Joe's. And I'll catch you on the next one, guys. And uh, that's it, because I'm out. Get back and go.